In the Piut Unatana Tokef, it is God who decides our fates every year, who shall live, who shall die, and the manner of death. But in medieval times, just as today, human beings needed to feel that they had some control over their own destinies. Thus, the poet suggests, tshuva, tbila, tzedaka, repentance, prayer, and charity. Today, we might add or even substitute diet, exercise, staying mentally active, and maintaining a positive attitude. In the poem, dying is quick. While it is still possible to get struck down suddenly and unexpectedly today, many people struggle with chronic diseases which we are able to manage, very often for decades. Disease is not actually mentioned in the poem. Unfortunately, I have become all too familiar with one of these very slow but progressive diseases which we have yet to conquer, dementia. As many of you know, my husband Julius, who has been suffering from frontotemporal dementia for many years, suffered a stroke when and was unable to restore function to his left side. At that time, he was moved to a skilled nursing floor at the self-help home, where he used to be one of the rotating volunteers to lead the Friday night Shabbat services. In our country, where the medical model has been to sustain life at all costs, we have now added legal documents in an attempt to give us some say into what happens to us as we age if we fall ill. We file an advanced health care directive, or living will, which allows us to choose an agent to make end-of-life decisions for us if we no longer can do so. We check off whether we want every possible life-sustaining measure taken till the very end, treatment until we fall into an irreversible coma, or just until our agent deems that the treatments are outweighing the benefits. When we are young, it's not all that difficult to choose, partly because, of course, we cannot imagine what future illnesses might befall us. If you had asked my young, vibrant physics professor and cantor husband if he would deem his life worth living were he to be confined to a wheelchair, needing help with the daily tasks of daily living, unable to make any decisions or even be aware of his condition, I am sure he would have said no. But gradually, he has come to be in this very condition, and he is unable to give us his opinions. When you enter a facility, there is another legal, more specific form to fill out, the POLST, or Practitioner's Orders for Life-Sustaining Treatment. Power of attorney for healthcare means that the role of the family has to shift from being loving and supportive only to trying to intuit what the person would really want when he himself doesn't understand the options. I'm the one who has to approve all the tests, prescriptions, and treatments his doctor recommends. We are lucky that one of our sons is a physician and very good at explaining to lay people like the rest of us the consequences of various procedures like intubation for a person of Julius's age and condition. And we are also fortunate that our family is all on the same page with regard to end of life care and that so far the decisions have not been difficult. We hope we will not have to make the hard one. In Unatana Tokef, God decides. We wish we could rely on God to decide for us when the big decisions come. Due to COVID, I can no longer see Julius in person, have lunch with him, do the activities with him, hold his hand during the Sunday concerts. We do have dates on FaceTime. Lately, I have been using YouTube and showing him videos of various cantorial concerts. And uh, they do seem to hold his attention. And when I wish him good night in the evenings and say I love you on the telephone, and he replies, me too, I can still feel the sweet, gentle soul that he always was. I would like to say thank you to those of you who went to visit Julius with or without me check on his well-being, to talk to him, to bring him treats and flowers, to sing to him, play cards with him, and stay for the ice cream. I cannot begin to tell you how grateful we both are for your kindness. Although chronic mental medical conditions 
and COVID-19 have complicated our lives. They have not changed the basic need we all have to be part of a greater community supporting one another. Congregation Rutvetsedek, you have provided this for me, and I hope I will be able to reciprocate. Shana Tova.